Hi, this is Linda with the Life Station Express, the Relay Station. We bring the news to you. I just wanted to make a little continuation of some of the discoveries that I've made on my journey with the ketogenic lifestyle. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos about keto, you will know that I'm doing this for my health. I am not doing this for weight loss, although I did lose a few pounds in the beginning. And that took for me, since I didn't have a lot of weight to lose, that took for me maybe six months to a year. And I've maintained that weight, which I feel like with my body shape and my height is, is the proper weight for me to have. So I'm, I'm hovering around 113. It can go down to one, maybe 11 up to 115, but it's in that range that is normal for me. And if you've known me very long, you know that I'm not a larger person that I've always been a, a thinner person. So that is a good place for me to be. I was up to 130 pounds when I started this, which was a little heavy for me. So I've regulated the way I've eaten and now I'm kind of, you know, in the place where I'm supposed to be. I feel like my body feels good. I feel like it's a good weight for me. This is my way. This is not your way. Your body will regulate to what your weight is supposed to be if you follow the way of the ketogenic lifestyle. Now, that means keeping your carbohydrates under 20 total carbs a day. And that means eliminating certain foods that maybe are your favorite foods. I have had to eliminate some favorite foods. I will say the one that I miss the most is potatoes. I can eat a potato fried, scalloped, creamed, French, whatever. I love potatoes. And you know what? After I got through this for about two years, I tasted some mashed potatoes. And I've done that, I think, three times in the last two and a half years. And because I can do that and be right back in the place, I really never got off the place of being in ketosis by having a spoonful of mashed potatoes. Some people cannot do that. If you cannot go back to a food and just have a taste of it, say you're a sugarholic or you're somebody that really craves and has that addiction to sugar, you might not want to try it. I am not a sugarholic. I do like sugar. Who doesn't? But I think probably on, for me, the potatoes and the starch, which turn into sugar, are, would be a really a place where I could have a downfall if I wasn't really aware of what I'm doing. Now, I have my why. And if you've watched my other videos, you know what my why is. I need to keep on track for my health because I want to be here for many more years. So I'm just sharing that. But I will tell you, this is what I've discovered next. I did make a video several months ago about the seasonal way Richard and I live. We are here in the camper, in our camper, there you go, six months out of the year. We are here from the middle of April until the middle of October. And then the campground closes, they turn the water off, they turn the electric off, and we all go back to our regular homes. Now we do have an apartment that we keep during the whole year, but during the winter months, we are at our apartment and I made a video earlier, a few months ago, about the differences that I was noticing. And I think it was because in the winter, you're not moving around as much. In the summer, we can go outside. We can take walks. We can, I can ride my bike. We can do different things. It's a little more active, not a whole lot, but a little more. And I was noticing I was eating a little bit differently while I was at the apartment during the winter. And I talked about my fat intake and that because my body doesn't hold, how can I put this? I don't have a lot of fat reserve. I guess I can say that. So I was eating, I was overeating a little bit on the fat end of it, a little too much um, bacon grease, a little too much butter bites, a little too many of the little chocolates that I make that are like little fat bombs. Those are great. And those really, really help you to get going in your ketogenic journey. They were awesome. But I noticed when I was home, at home in the wintertime, um, I was a little more not moving around so much. And I think I was a little more in the kitchen and able to 
just eat when I wanted to, eat what I wanted to. Not that I went off a of keto, I never did, but I think I had a little too much butter, if you want to, I can say it that way. And I loved butter. And I was noticing that I was using butter in the place of a snack and I was using butter in the place of a sweet, if I would normally have a sweet, like I would make the little chocolate um, fat bomb things, which are delicious, but you only need to eat one or two at a time. You don't need to eat more than that. And it, it's not that I was eating more of them at a sitting, but I would pick on them throughout the day. And I think I was just getting a little bit too much fat. So I noticed that and I pulled back on that. And then I also noticed once we got up here to the campground, I kind of change again. And it, it's funny, you do the, you make these changes and you really, you just don't notice it. You don't notice it. And again, this is June. So we've been here since the middle of April. And I've noticed that since Richard is also retired, um, we make our meals. Now I make an evening meal for the two of us every night, but during the day we take care of ourselves. I don't make him breakfast. I don't make him lunch. You know, we are all in different schedules. Richard's a night owl. I'm a morning person. So I get up, I wait maybe half an hour, have a eight ounce coffee with a little stevia or a little, um, what are the little, the skinny syrups. I'll have maybe the cinnamon one, a little bit of that in my coffee. And I do have heavy cream. I don't, I haven't come back on the heavy cream, although that's not an area that I would overindulge in. But anyway, I would get up half an hour later, have that eight ounces of coffee or so. Then in between nine and 10, I will have two eggs and probably two, two and a half strips of bacon, or I will make a chaffle or two and put the um, guacamole on them. And I try to kind of balance that out one, one day, one the next or whatever. I've also um, had for breakfast, and I really like these if you're in more of a hurry, I've used turkey um, lunch meat, like sliced turkey, really thin sliced turkey lunch meat. I call it lunch meat. I get it at Sam's Club and I'll wrap that up with a, a piece of provolone cheese and I'll eat two of them in the morning along with the coffee and I'm satisfied for hours. Way, way satisfied. I understand when my body's full and I don't, I don't feel hungry. So I can eat two of those. Um, after I have that type of a breakfast a little later in the morning, I am a breakfast person, so I don't wait too long. I do like to have breakfast. I do like to break the fast because a lot of times I will wake up with my stomach growling because I don't eat a lot in the evening. I'll stop eating in the evening by at least seven. I won't have anything after seven. Um, so anyway, I do wake up hungry. So I do have a little breakfast, a good substantial breakfast, actually for me, two eggs and some bacon or two chaffles and guacamole. That's, that's a lot for me or two of those roll-ups. That's a good bit. It fills me up. And then after that, I will have a pure boost electrolyte slash vitamin drink, which I totally love those. The acai berry is my favorite. Um, they have different flavors and I will have that in my cup Let me see. that I know you've seen before because it's in a lot of my videos, but I will put this in my cup. I think it's a 20 ounce. It's not the huge one, but I think it's a 20 ounce cup. And then after that, which is where I am now, um, I make tea and I wanted to share a little bit about the teas that I found and I've been discovering and experimenting with different teas because tea, I get the decaf kind. If I make tea, like an iced tea, which I do pretty much make just regular iced tea, sweeten it with um, a tea bag. Oh, I should have had these ready, shouldn't I? But I've shown you this before, so it's not something new. I will put one of these um, in my, in a jar, maybe with this much water and just steep one tea bag and it's sweetened with sucralose, and, um, which is fine. Don't worry about sucralose, it's fine. And it's just a little bit. And then I'll make my regular Tetley decaf tea. I'll make a quart and I'll have that. Or I'll have, let me show you what I'm doing. I found a different, I'm looking at different brands of teas because if you've seen them advertised on social media, they make them look really good. They, they pour the tea over the ice in a crystal glass and they make it look so good. And I did order some from 
Adagio Teas. I guess that's how you say it. And I, I got several. This is called White Peach. This one is Purple Papaya Berry. And this one, I got three or four of them, is Wild Strawberry. They were all really good. They all taste really good. And what you do, and again, I just make a quart jar. I don't make a big old pitcher of tea every day. Richard doesn't drink tea. I wish he would, but he doesn't. So I just make it for myself. And they come, this brand comes in these little diffuser like oh my gosh that one really smells good that's the strawberry oh my gosh and that one turns out to look really pink with the strawberry color um and they're natural teas this one says honestly i'll just read it sweet strawberry and sugared rhubarb aroma beautiful warm color and a pleasant aroma steep hot or refrigerate overnight in cold water it has rose hips, hibiscus, apple pieces, natural strawberry flavor, strawberries and raspberry leaves. Now, it says it's sweet, but honestly, I don't worry about any sweetener or any natural sugar that might be in a little bit of sweet herbal berry tea. I don't worry about it. It's not enough to kick me out of ketosis or do anything. So I will put that in a quart jar as well and steep it. If I want it sweetened, I'll just add one of these as well to that. So that is kind of what I'm doing. If I want to get something, just, you know, have something later in the day, I'll get some of these little wisp crackers. I've also made these myself. You can make these, but this is so easy, you know. Um, and this is funny because this brand, they're really good. They're just cheese. They're just cheese. So again, carbohydrates, it says one for this, this whole pack. And I get these at Sam's Club as well. It's funny because on the back of the, of the package, it says Wisp, uh, Wisps with an S logo and the distinctive, oh, it's so small, circular shape of Wisp cheese crisps are trademarks of Wisps snacks and may not be used without permission. So I guess you can't duplicate these and sell them, but they're really good. This is the cheddar one. I also get the Parmesan cheese one. But those are just some things that um, I find myself, and the point of this video is I find myself not grazing while we're here in the camper as much as if I was inside, I'm sorry, inside, indoors, tried to say that all at once, indoors, during the winter and um, I work at home. So when I'm working, I'm not eating, but when I'm not working, you kind of, you know, unless you're doing something else and I do a lot of study and a lot of research and that kind of thing. But I just find that the atmosphere here at the campground is a little more conducive to not eating as much. So what I do, again, I'll go back to it. I have I have a little coffee in the morning, just a little, it's decaf. And I don't need caffeine. I'm one of those people. I wake up ready to go. I'm one of those people. So I have decaf coffee. And right now I'm drinking the Aldi brand. It's really good. And um, then I'll have the two eggs, some bacon, or the other breakfast proteins that I shared with you. Later in the day, I don't really do like a lunch. I might do a little cheese, a little lunch meat, a little something just to kind of hold me over. And some people say you can do that. Some people say you should not do that because every time you eat, it's a meal. You should consider that a meal because you're you're um, having an insulin res uh, an insulin um, reaction. So your body is using that food, and um, you know it's doing what it's supposed to do to function correctly. But I think at this point for me, the way I've been doing keto, it, it's fine. I, I'm not, again, watching what I eat for my weight. I'm watching what I eat for my health. And I um, just wanted to share a little bit about that, that every six months, my location, our location changes. And I have to be a little bit aware now of where I am how am I going to eat? And I think all of us should look at, you know, if we find ourselves over snacking, we find ourselves, you know, too hungry or not hungry enough. Or I know that if I would skip my breakfast or if I would say I'm having a late breakfast with a friend, 
we might be going like to Perkins, which is my favorite place to go just because it's easy to get, they have food that we can eat at Perkins. If I'm say I'm meeting them at 11 and all I've had is, is eight ounces of coffee, I might be really hungry and I might overeat. Or if I'm waiting and say somebody's coming to visit me here and we're going to eat at 11 or after that, I'm really hungry and I might overeat just because I want to eat because I haven't had food for a while. But after two years, two and a half years, it'll be three years Thanksgiving that I've been doing this. I'm learning what my body needs. And the whole point of what I'm doing today and saying to you today is you've got to figure this out for yourself. My body is not your body. Everybody's physical makeup is different. We do have generalities, which are the same. Yes, again, keep the carbs down, move a little bit, do something that's going to get your body moving, um, you know, just whatever you need to do. And I know I've made a video back further about using my rebounder because when I'm at the apartment, I'm not as moving around as much and I get on the rebounder and that cleanses your lymphatic system. So there are all kinds of things to do. Please take and look at other people's videos and get a lot of this information in yourself so that you know what to do for you because it will benefit you greatly and you'll live longer and you'll be feeling better. You'll know what it means to be hungry. You'll know what it means to be satiated. You'll know what it, how good you can feel when you get off the sugar. I'm telling you, I was never a big sugar, sugar eater. I mean, I like sugar, but I mean, Oreos were, I love them and other things, but when you get that sugar out of your body, you feel energized. You, if you have any pain, your pain will start to leave. It's just amazing what being on a low carb or ketogenic or even a carnivore lifestyle will do for your overall health. And I think that's all I wanted to say. I kept this under 20 minutes, which yay me, proud of me for doing that. I will talk to you soon. I think that's all I wanted to say. This is Linda with the Life Station Express, the Relay Station. That's the news we're bringing to you today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and week and month. And until I see you again, God bless. Bye.